right. So you go ahead. It's recording. I, I don't. Do you even know why? Why don't you pick a charger? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is Joyce and her dad, Larry, who just turned 80 years old back in February. And based on the title of this video, you already know why we're here. Larry purchased this 1968 Charger back when it was brand new, which makes him the first and only owner of this beautiful machine. Now, Jonathan and Macy of Macy's Garage contacted me for assistance to help Joyce get her father's car back on the road, and I couldn't resist but ask Jacob Davis of Sally Speed Shop to lend me a hand on a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Howdy folks, today we're out in the middle of Tennessee because we heard about a 68 Charger behind this door right here. I'm Dylan and I'm with Jacob Davis of Sally Speed Shop and I asked him to help me out because this is a big project, but we wanna help this car get back on the road for the first time in a very long time. We're about to see a true barn find one owner 68 Charger that's been sitting for we don't know how many years and it's right behind this door, so. Yeah. So let's get it open. Yes, please. We're not in the greatest shape. Okay. It may like break off. Oh, yeah, that should, there you go. It should... I don't know if you just noticed, but my, my face broke out to a smile. <laughs> <laughs> so you said pull up right here. <laughs> that is literally what dreams are made of right there. Man. Wow. That is cool. A 68 Charger with some of the best patina I have ever seen sitting in a barn in Tennessee. Oh, man. God. This is good. It's even got the cat paw prints all over it. This is good. This is really good. I love the color on this thing, too. Is That that looks like B5 blue. It is. It's B5, B5 blue. Black top with... Oh, no, it's not B5. I'm sorry. You want... Oh, is it? And we've got blue interior on the inside. Wow, that is incredible. And of course, you gotta love the 68 Charger tail lights. Oh yeah, absolutely. God, so good. And look, the, there's hardly any, like just the barely smallest amount of rust. That's incredible right there. You, I mean, my own car that I drive is gone right here. Mm, look at that. That is beautiful. It is super straight too. If you look down the body lines of this car, I don't see a single dent on this side. Man, that is awesome. So the first time the car was ever damaged was like 1974, I think it was. My mother was driving, she drove to work in a snowstorm and my grandmother owned a, a Dairy Queen on 16th and Woodland in Nashville. And she pulled in the parking lot. My grandmother was the only car in the lot. My mother hit, slid into her and hit her. And then, so there's a damage on the right, right front car of the car. And then uh, the another snowstorm a few years later after we brought, had built the house in Eastover, she pulled out of the garage door and got too close. Or she slid too close, I'm not sure. She said she slid. We think she just backed into it. But, so she backed into the garage door. It got the, the, the side the garage door. The hinge there got the, got the side of the car by the gas cap. And then the other time was when the guy was going to repair the car. He, he put it on the trailer and it scratched the side of it a little bit. You know, those aren't damaged though. That's just character. It's yeah. Damaged. That's a story. Yeah, yeah. yeah and you, you hate to fix something like that. Yeah. That's a good story. What you think, Don? I'm excited. I want to see what's inside here. We've got, uh, you said what code was the blue? UU1. UU1. And then we have blue on the outside, blue on the inside. Oh, look at that. That's immaculate. Oh, there. I think this door's locked. Oh, is it? <laughs> hey. Oh, wait, maybe not. I have the key. Oh, we actually have keys to this Yeah. Part? It's the, it's the, yeah, the Pentastar. Oh, the Pentastar yep. one does it? I upside down. Chrysler. Yeah, I remember them being upside down. Look at the blue. Blue carpet. It's, I mean, it looks like it's still all there. I don't see any rot. Oh, okay, beautiful. well, the key's not working, so you key's might not have working. To raise it up Let me see if inside. I can, I'll crawl in. Oh, it smells like a charger. Uh-oh. Push tab is pushed down. There you go. Oh, we got both doors working. Oh, hey. Hello. We got two cameras. The gauges are all there. The 68 used this like, this black paneling here, where the 69 went to like a wood grain. 
and I, I kind of like the 68 better personally. And they all had like these fighter jet switches, you know, just push button, real simple for washer. Just, you know, it's it's easy. Check out the club on the steering wheel too. Oh yeah, I it's mean, got an anti theft device. Nobody's stealing this bad boy. <laughs> That's for sure. Tucked in a barn with a club on it. Right. Somebody loved their car. Right. <laughs> the blue on blue with the black vinyl. Top oh, absolutely. Is a killer combo. Absolutely. With the center console. We got the back seats clean too. I mean, it's aged, but it's it's all there, and that's what we like. We like stuff that we can find that's complete, all there. Well, there's another hubcap on the floor over here. Oh, is so there? We got two so far. There's a hubcap story that we're gonna have to talk about here in a minute. Do you want to tell the story about the hubcap? Yes, yeah, so we can tell the story. <laughs> about the hubcap. So I was a junior, yeah, junior in high school, and I went to a party because the class president was having a party. And I went to his party, and I went with a couple other girls, and they had beer there, and of course I had to partake. And so I had a beer that night, and I, somewhere along the line, way taking them home, I lost the hubcap. So my dad, when I walked in the house, he said, he said, you need to go to bed before your mom gets up. I said, okay. So I went to bed, he woke me up at six o'clock the next morning. And he said, he said, uh, he said, now we're gonna go chop wood. I said, okay because, you know, we had a fireplace, and we did that sometimes. So we went to the farm that we owned in Watertown that he grew up on. Went up there, and we had, the, we chopped wood, all, cut wood all day long. We got ready to leave to go home, and he said, he said, the, the, the story is that when you do party the night before, you still have responsibilities the next day. You have to go to, you have to work, and you have to go to school. <laughs> so, he so, so he taught me a lesson, and I was like, oh, gosh. But when I was, I, my senior, senior year in college, I had governmental accounting 7 a.m. in the summer, and I was we got out and party the night before, and I was the only one that was ever in class on time. Sticker here on the door jam, and look at the door jams; they're in great shape. There's spiders hanging out and stuff, but you know <laughs> that's fine. We'll get rid of them. But super see. nice car. Let me see that key, and we'll open the trunk. Yeah. So we got the original keys right here. This is the first time it's been open in a while. She said she thinks the hub. Right Look at that. She thinks the hubcap might be in here. Oh, there's one down there. So we got three now. We got three out of the three that are supposed to be uh -oh. accounted for. Look here. Ooh, the license plate. 84. That's one of the old ones. Is there one on it? There's one on it that says 07. 07. Nice. So, that's the last time that they know of that it was registered and on the road. Right. So. So we got air tank, we got extra speakers. There's a spare wheel. Oh here. yeah. It's beautiful. I'm sure is, there's you know, surface rust, but this thing's solid. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. This is a this is a wall hanger. Oh yeah. I sure. love these. Mm. Got some. I just want to see how if the trunk floor was solid or not. There's a mouse nest right there. Mm. I think we're in good shape. I think so. There's another grease gun. There's a lot of grease guns. Somebody liked the grease stuff around here. <laughs> this is like the third one we found already. Yes, you can pull that up. It's got a little rot, but not bad. Yeah, not bad. I just want to make sure that the like the gas tank, if we end up putting one in it, is like, you know, not going to be held in by hopes and dreams. To hold it to. <laughs> yeah. Don't have to ratchet strap it in. Right. Oh, and of course. Oh, it flips. It flips. And it's really not terrible looking in there. No, get a whiff. I don't, like. I don't know if I want to smell it. It smells like old gas, but it, it still has a gas smell, so it's not dry. Well, he said it was empty, like they had emptied it, I guess. Okay. From... Oh, and there's one dent here by the pillar neck that they mentioned. So which dent was that? That's on, I might have hit the garage door. The garage door. She <laughs> right backed there. in and didn't. It has two dents on it, I wasn't doing both of them. So only two dents on this <laughs> the whole car. The only two dents in the car. Well, good. Yeah, I'm glad you did, because y'all took care of it. That's awesome. It's in great shape. Absolutely. And being a vinyl oh. top car that's still solid. Watch this. The doors don't sag and they shut. Oh, it sounds brand new. Mm. Look at this though. Some groundhogs went to town over here. Yeah, we got some. There's about two feet of extra gravel piled up on this side of the We're car. gonna have to excavate or something. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna have to do I some mean, digging. We didn't bring a shovel. I didn't I didn't expect that. Oh, they've got shovels, we're all right. <laughs> we're almost touching the rockers and quarters over here with gravel <laughs> from where they've been digging out from underneath it. So what I'm hearing is we might have to kick out a varmint. Yeah. <laughs> or three. <laughs> He's been trying to get rid of it for a while apparently. Because our goal today and tomorrow is to get this car to the point where 
it can run and drive and be able to be a functioning car again because it is a, oh, yeah. Yeah, that door's a little sticky. It's a Dodge thing. There we go. See, that's funny, the Dodge, every one of these that I've messed with, that the little uh, push button will get stuck, and just pop it back out. That, you can tell you're an expert when you yeah. hit it with such authority. I've done it so many times. You've been there before. Look at that. Gosh, that looks good. I love it. Blue on blue, you can't beat it. It's perfect. You really can't beat it. This is one of the coolest cars I've ever seen sitting in a barn. Absolutely. And of course, the uh, you know authentic paw prints. You see the Jiffy Lube sticker under there too? Where at? In the door? No, Over on, here? The, on the windshield. It's yeah. a Jiffy Lube symbol. Wow. So grab, grab your hand. There you go. And then the other one's like right here. The mighty small block. The old 318, look at it. Wow. And it's all there. Yeah, totally intact. Hoses, belts, everything. This is what we're working with today. What we're looking at is brakes, get it running, fuel system, and get this car to the point where it actually can function as a car again. Because, I mean, what 68 Charger should, I mean, it should all run. Because he's always like Dodges. Right. So, and he decided he wanted a Charger. They went to look at a 1966 Dodge Charger. Um, <clears throat> and um, and uh, he, uh, my mother wanted a 1966 because it was a, you know, it was a used car, so it would be cheaper, right? But when we got there, he saw this one, he liked it. And then I liked the blue because I was a Richard Petty fan, and I wanted the blue to be Richard Petty's car look. So that's how we got started with this, right? Yep. Yes, it was November the 8th, 1968. And it was the car cost uh, three thousand eighty-seven dollars and seventy-two cents. But the total, the total with the um, with the the um, tags and everything was four thousand one hundred eighty dollars and seventy-two cents. Wow! And this is the original document sales paper That's from awesome. the from Music City Dodge. He would eat the car once a week for me. Oh, okay. So they go then. And then you'd go burn all the gas racing boys. Exactly. To get their money. Yeah, because they, like they, it. they, you know, they, they thought I was a girl. I couldn't race this car. <laughs> I, 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 so you know, I got a reputation at school that you know I could race, and uh, so you get jump on the interstate at two thirty eight exit. It's go down the right, the entrance ramp there on the interstate, and then you take off, get side side take off, and I do. Just get, let it rip. Yeah, and the two thirty nine exit, I get off the party town exit. And then run from the cops. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never ran from the cops. That was him. No, no. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. So what you're saying is it ran in the family? It did run in the family. He, oh, he, he ran moonshine. When he's a he's teenager. Look, he's checking. He's the oil. checking the oil. He's look, got. It's full. I can see it. What's here. it say? So. Looking good. He uh, he uh, he ran moonshine. Oh yeah, she's clean. Look, all, almost dead on the full mark. Yeah. yeah, and it's at an angle, so if it if it tilts back, I bet it's dead on full. Oh sure, they know what's up. Sure, these guys took care of this thing. For sure. Yeah, he changed the gas, the oil every three thousand miles. He's missed it. you know, I had to always do that. And I and I got in high school. He taught me how to do it, and so I changed the oil in the car when I was in high school, and I drove it. So really, yeah. So he he's very stickler on maintenance of the car. Well, it shows because the car's still here and held yeah. up. Well, we'll yeah. make sure to do you proud and do it right. Dad had a stroke back in nineteen ninety five. And so he, that's when he started moving in and started living with me. And uh, so that it really, it was really hard for it to do anything with the car and stuff at that point in time. So I part, we parked the car and it was in the garage then. And then, uh, then we went from the garage to a carport. And uh, so we went about this place, there was no carport and anything for it to go into. And so we had the barn full, so we just parked it outside. And that's when it obtained all the damage that it has today. He'd go about once a week and he'd start the car and just let it run a little while, and then he, you know, eventually he got to where he's had a hard time walking down to the barn, so he just stopped doing it. But, right. but I say we're going to check to make sure it's not stuck, which, you know, based on what we've seen here, I doubt it is, but you never know, especially being in dry storage. But I'm going to pull this air cleaner off and just see exactly what we got going on under here. A little crunchy. <laughs> Come on in here and check this out. Oh, yeah, we're good. Oh, it's just around the outside. Yeah, just around yeah. the outside. We're fine. Yeah. Ain't no big deal at all. And definitely something was going to town in there, though. And it was rebuilt at one point, too, wasn't it? Oh, the carburetor? Yeah. He gonna... said it was new. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. yeah. I'm going to set this right here. We don't lose that. Um, see if it's... Does it move any? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look, look there. Watch the crank. Yeah. That spins easy. It's, it's basically running at this point. Pretty much. 
<laughs> I think if you dump some gas down the throat and put a battery in it, it'd fire right up. Probably so, honestly. Um, we're going to go through the basics. Uh, Macy, would you be interested in giving us a hand? So we've got some help today. And so this is a car that you wanted, basically. This is something that you had been looking into. Yeah. So tell them about what you have, I guess, you wanted a 68 to 70 Charger, and mm -hmm. it just so happens a family member had one. Mm -hmm. So kind of give the story about what it is. Well, my dad worked on this old Suzuki sidekick for forever. So me and my brother would go out and bother him while he was working and slow down the process a lot. But I just, we watched old car shows and a bunch of different things that were just like all these beautiful cars that were super shiny. And I was like, I really want one of those. And I mean, probably I saw it on a show and I was like, dad, I like, I like that car. Mm -hmm. And he was just like, <laughs> okay, yeah, I, uh, we can work with that. Talking about a 68 to 70 Charger, <laughs> it's the right? most expensive car right, ever. Right, yeah, very hard to find. Um, and I don't remember whose wedding it was, but it was some family member's wedding, and we were talking about it and talking about cars, because that's, I mean, that's what you do when you're talking with family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Joyce came up and was like, I, I have that car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she was talking about all the stories that her and her dad had, and... She talked about, you know, it's not running anymore, but you guys could come out if you wanted to do it. So it's just been a really fun process getting in contact with you. And right. Because that's came when your out dad here, reached out, out to me, here, yeah. which was, unfortunately, it was two years ago. <laughs> and I'm just now to the point where we can come out here and finally work on it. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I appreciate you guys even remotely giving me any type of, you know, say so or any kind of work done to this thing or give me the opportunity so i i'm just as excited as you guys are to see this car yeah I, I saw this once before before now we went out and saw it and i was just like oh, it's, <laughs> it's real <laughs> so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna run through the basics of how these old cars work basically okay, and it's nice. it's very simple it's okay. and I'm, it's not as hard as you think okay. i promise and you know if there's something that's not good or needs replacing we've got pretty much everything to make it work cool. so we've got all brand new and as we go we we will can we can replace this stuff and make sure it's nice and new so on this car we're using a an ignition type which is called a points style ignition all it is is just a little contact that and i'll show it to you uh, as the distributor spins, you know, and each one of these little uh, plug wires goes to each individual cylinder, mm -hmm. that thing will spin and it'll open up those points. Okay. And what that does, it'll create a gap. Okay. And then that gap opens up, it creates a spark that goes, you know, uh, it, it'll uh, ignite each one of these as that rotor spins around. And we'll show it to you as it actually works because mm -hmm. I'm probably going to guess that the points don't work. That's usually how they go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the first thing you do if you ever want to get an old car to run, check for spark, check for fuel, make sure you have compression. Yeah. Because those are the three basics to make something run. Yeah, and tell me about those. Yeah, so I'm, I'm guessing that, you know, the carburetor is not stuck, so we can get enough fuel to at least make it run. Okay. Spark is probably our next big thing. We've got a brand new coil, we've got a brand new points and condenser and cap, spark plug wires, spark plugs, and if we can at least get some kind of spark, you know, then we can start changing and make everything nice. So cool. let's pull off this distributor cap and see what we got going on under here. You say it's simple, but there's just so many wires. I promise you, <laughs> I promise you it's not as hard as you think. Once you, once you do it about 500 times, oh look, somebody's replaced the points at some point, I, I'm assuming. Yeah, so what happens is as the engine spins, see how that rotor spins? Mm -hmm. What you're getting is spark coming at power from the coil to this contact right here, mm -hmm. which then sparks each one of these contacts inside oh, the I distributor. Mm -hmm. So as it spins around, it's gonna spark eight times, um, which gives spark to each cylinder. Mm -hmm. But it has to do it in the firing order, which is on this one is one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. And we're gonna go through that when okay. we do spark plug wires. So we'll pull this off. And there's your, your contacts right there, your points the very back it's hard to see but you can mm -hmm. crawl up in here and look. oh yeah i see mm -hmm. so you see the lobes on the cam mm -hmm. on the distributor mm -hmm. as it goes around it'll lift those up and open it mm -hmm. so that's where the spark comes from so what we're going to do we're going to take this battery out first thing because this thing is probably older than all of us here so 
Oh, it came loose though. That was nice. Jacob, how many battery cables that look like this do you have come break loose? Just Never. that easy? Never. <laughs> this car is going to be way too nice oh, to us. I spoke too soon. Oh. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> now you need a wrench. We need the tool truck. <laughs> All right. So this is my C20 service truck I built for Hot Rod Power Tour this year. But I always wanted to do what we're doing today is show up at people's houses who have had a car that's sitting for a long time and get it running. So I built this truck to be a mobile shop. So I have drawers with every tool I could ever need just right at hand. I have a whole cabinet full of tools and parts, all my electric impacts and stuff. I literally built it to be something to be able to show up and help people get their cars running and anybody that breaks down, show up and help them too. So it's, it's one of the best things I have ever built and I'm super excited to be here helping Dylan today as well as the family get this car that's so special to them back on the road. That one's really on there. There we go. Get rid of the old battery. And uh, Dylan brought a battery to put in this thing. This battery is <laughs> 2011. <laughs> but it holds a charge better than any battery I have. Look, I've even cooked it on a header and it still works fantastic. So that's a big shout out to Optima right there. So I just opened up the door and I am immediately greeted by a working dome light. It's just the center console light, but it's working on the door switch still. Have an idea. When have you seen that in an old car? The horn works. <laughs> <laughs> this car is ridiculous. So hey, I mean, we know it's not locked up. It's got oil in it. Just turn the key over and see what happens. You don't have to have that thing on it? All right, that's... To run, you do. I'm but for, to make it start, start we I'm don't have to. Bump it? Yeah, go ahead. Look at there. Oh. Oh yeah. When he spins it over, you and me are gonna be looking for spark right here. Ready? Yep. All right. Yeah, no spark here. I don't think the yeah the points weren't even opening up. Oh really? So look, if we're gonna adjust them, we might as well change it. Yeah. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> you get it though. You'll be able to see it. It'll do like that really fast. Uh, and then it's going to be a little spark in there. See, okay. you, once we change it out, you'll be able to see it. It's like the worst thing to drop to. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, see those little baby screws right there? You will lose these every single time. And then you'll never be able to find it. Do you anything. have a condenser too? Do you want to try to sure get it at it? That's, I think, 90% of the time what goes bad is either points or condenser. Yeah. And absolutely. coils obviously go bad too. Sometimes. Absolutely. It's like a weird 9.30 seconds or something like that. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's something. It's I don't odd. even know if I got a 9.30 seconds. Well, if you got a good set of flyers, that'll do the trick. Yeah. What a lovely day. Yeah. <laughs> so the condenser is basically just a capacitor. Um, it stores a charge and discharges over and over and over again. Every single time that these open and close, every time they do that, this is storing energy and releasing it. And then it's telling the coil to discharge its energy into one of the spark plug wires and then down to one of these spark plugs, which then fires the that cylinder when the thing's at top dead center, essentially. Yeah, this we, is like we, the first we won't thing get I can into, understand. We won't There's a this. lot going on there. We won't get into timing theory and all that stuff yet. We're gonna get into just the fact you need spark, fuel, yeah. compression, explosion. Yeah. Exhaust, and and sweet sounding. This burnout. is called the distributor because it distributes spark. Exactly. That's the only reason it's called that. Ah, yeah. so, <laughs> it makes sense. It's a simple explanation, but everybody's like, oh, it's called this fancy thing. No. The good thing about points distributors is they're super simple to make run. Yeah. They're not as, they're not as consistent, I guess, in today's terms, I guess, compared to electronic ignition, but they're way easier to make work. It's, it's so simple. It's about as simple as you could do for an ignition system. Absolutely. Like it doesn't, it's, it's just dead reliable most of the time. They've been using that concept since like the Model T. The dawn of time. Yeah, since yeah. the first car. Back in the so. Stone Age. The dinosaurs <laughs> were driving around in 68 Chargers. I mean, the Flintstones. Exactly. They ran with points. A Flintstones reference from a 13 year old? That is impressive. Did I just I'm hear that 14, right? 14. 14. 14. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's still <laughs> impressive. Back in my Come on, Gee. and we're gonna do it in the '68 Charger, right? We're gonna, <laughs> oh yeah, you're that's gonna, what we're gonna you're take the <laughs> You'd be the only kid saying the that. The only one. The real exciting part: watching somebody else. Watching work. everybody else work, just kind of sitting back and waiting. This is what you wanted. You wanted me to work. <laughs> hey, and you know what? My least favorite thing to do: brakes and change points. So I'm glad you're doing it. It's a. Is it because they're so tiny? Because that yeah, change point looks so tiny. You have to adjust it just right, and it's got. And we should have put. You it use a, a business card. 
Yeah. That's that's the old yeah. trick. You slide a business card in it to set the gap. It's, so it's not technically the right way. You're supposed to use a feeler gauge, but business cards are essentially the, same. the exact width you need. Plus, it's, it's great, like a little, little It's a good little shout out. It's, it's also a shameless out. plug is what it is. <laughs> that's what, exactly what it is. You ready? Yeah. That looks good to me. Mostly, I just hope the dudes at my school watch your channel so I can be like, <laughs> your face. It's like I am famous. Then you go take their lunch money, like your exactly, <laughs> exactly. So if you want to come up here and you can see Yay. now that we replaced it and we set the gap. So what I had to do was you, there's a the screw back here. Uh -huh. You oh, you can Jesus. open it up. So as he stuck that card in there, we open it up, stuck the card in. And then I took and tightened up the, the That's screw. That's what that is. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was wondering where the car was going. I was yeah. Wondering what the purpose of the car was. That makes sense. Right. You got anything? Oh! Yay! Yep. So now let's bump the key and see if we get spark at that little spark plug tester. So watch at the very end of my screwdriver, you should see a little blue light. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That? So we got spark now. <laughs> Getting yeah. fuel, so we need to it's cut. It's pumping the, fuel. It is pumping though. fuel, but we need to cut that. Get that out of there. Oh That's yeah, wild. I can smell it. That's I'll get. I'll get a pair of cutters. That's wild. Oof. We Oof. don't want it to do fuel. I thought that was the next step. So the problem. So yeah, that is the next step. But that gas tank is original. Okay. So. Oh, it, it's, it's original. I mean, he got a new one. It's yeah. got a new one put in, in it. In ninety-seven. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> it, that's the thing about like older vehicles is that they uh, gas will sit and uh -huh. it just turns to gel and bush I believe and rot. that's pumping gas that easy I want to cut it down there before the pump we'll be changing these lines anyway yeah we're, I got brand good. <laughs> no and it, it turns to basically varnish that's why it stinks oh. yeah if you want to if you smell the gas that. that's okay. on there <laughs> oh it does smell like varnish <laughs> like the wood stain exactly so we we want to eliminate that because that stuff right there, the varnish, that nasty stuff, will gum up all this, and it, it gums up your jets, all of your insurance, everything gets turned to mush basically. And when that happens, fuel can't flow, and that's why we have a new carburetor for it. Which we could rebuild this one, but it's a lot of times as cheap as that one was. It's best to just throw a brand new one on it, and not even care. So I thought carburetor had something to do with like. The spark. I didn't know it had anything to do with the fuel. Well, so that's this the, thing. Is the learning well, process. All it is is all it is is combining air and fuel. Oh. So, gas on its own. If you put took a five gallon bucket of gas and try to light it, it's not going to spark. The fumes and atomized fuel is what sparks. Yeah. So that's what this carburetor does. Okay. It takes that liquid fuel, mm -hmm. combines it with air, and turns it into a vapor, basically. Okay. Because that vapor will ignite, and that's where your combustion comes from. Here's a good idea. First of all, if you watched that last video, I left this out and couldn't figure out why I couldn't get spark. You leave this out. My dad just told me behind camera, he was from here, I want to see how long it he gets until yep. he forgets it. Yep. See, I, <laughs> I'm learning from my mistakes, and I'll still forget it, I guarantee you. When you get excited, you do stupid things to cars. So you need to or just think in general. I'm just a, it's pretty durable. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> this gravel's gonna be the death of me. Alright, you ready to run this thing? I'm ready to run this thing. <laughs> Would you like to do the honors? Don't drink it. <laughs> right here, right? Into yeah, this. just dump the whole thing right in there. Okay, and I can't mess it up. No. Okay, that's good. Oh, it's leaking fuel everywhere. That's a good thing we're gonna replace that. Oh, there's a vacuum. Yeah, I see it. It's over here too. Yep. Alright, Jacob, try it. You ready? Yep. I'm gonna step back. Alright, here we go. If it wanted to, it's got about 800 vacuum leaks right now. The oil pressure gauge didn't move yet, but it only ran for like two seconds. So I, if you saw the gas leaking out of the bottom, yeah, right here. there's multiple gaskets. And there's like three or four different pieces to this carburetor. And what I'm guessing is this gasket is so far gone that it's going to be such a severe vacuum leak. It's probably not gonna run on this one. It might, it might, it'll, it hit, but it's not gonna idle very well, if yeah. at all. So these are the best, by the way. I've never owned one, even though they're only like two bucks. They're literally the best thing for putting gas in a carburetor. We're upscale. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> probably good enough for now. I want to see if it has any accelerator pump. It's got negative accelerator pump, Jacob. Oh, uh, that's always good. So I'm just gonna squirt a little bit down in there. Are you gonna work the throttle? I'll try it. Okay. I gotta. Let me plug one. 
vacuum port with one hand and I work the throttle with the other. All right? You ready? Yep. Well, it's hitting. You ready to go again? Let me do a little bit of this. I don't know much, but that sound was cool. It's, it's better than <laughs> not. Yeah. All right, go for it. She runs. What's the sound? Yeah, that sounds like a car. Would you believe that it has 50 pounds of oil pressure really? at that tiny yeah. little bit it ran well, out? Now, I believe that. It was immediate, did. immediate 50 pounds of oil pressure. Wow. So we're going to take the wheels and tires off of it. Since we know it runs, we wanted to verify that before we did anything else. And while we're here, we're doing the brakes. So Jacob's going to hook his truck up to it, and we're going to pull it out of here and take the wheels and tires off, get the drums off, send them off to get resurfaced, and we've got brand new tires from Coker Tire that are gonna go right back onto this thing, and they're basically exactly what's supposed to be on this car from the factory, and they're radials. So they look the part, but they handle much better. So this car, like I said, by the end of this, between my video and Jacob's video, it's gonna be a running and driving example of a 1968 Charger. Come on, back up, come on, a little more. A little more. That's good. Let me put it in neutral. Wow, look at that. That's vintage. Came right off. That's cool. Oh, I get to drive the Charger. Eh. All right, Dylan's driving. I get to drive the Charger, Jacob. Oh, the window even works. Ow, I just cut the crap out of myself on that door panel. I'm sorry. That was pleasant. Anyway, there you go. Do I need to put my seatbelt on? Service truck did work. The service truck is the best. Oh, absolutely. We got it pulled outside, made some ruts, cleared those out real quick. But she's outside for the first time in quite a long, in a decade at this point, right? Over a decade. 11 years. 11 years. So it's cool to see this thing outside. But you can just see how immaculate this car is. I mean, it was preserved very nicely. But what we have here is a completely all original 1968 Charger in that beautiful blue, perfect patina. I mean, this is this is like unheard of territory. Look at that, no rot in the bottom of the fenders and the rockers, nothing. Guys yeah, look, ooh, the door's open. Look at that. No rocker rust. No Fan. holes. No holes whatsoever. Look at this. So clean. This is, and that's, well, it just goes to show you how the family had preserved this car and really wanted to take care of it because of how nice it truly is. We're gonna take the wheels off, pull the drums off just to check everything, and then uh, we're assuming we're gonna have to resurface the drums. We obviously need new tires, so. Tire there. Oh, hey, look. Yeah, that's got air in it. What is that, two PSI? Maybe two and a half. Two and a half PSI, so uh, we know for a fact that both front wheels are locked up with the brakes, so uh, it's not gonna be fun. Uh, get it up on four jack stands, make it run a little bit better, and then start making it stop. Still air it up. Doesn't care. That. Old tires, man. They don't make stuff like they used to. They don't. They don't. Well, it, it's gone up to 12. It was, what, at 7 yeah. a second ago? So it's it's at least holding air. 12 and a half. We should have done this before we moved it, but we're idiots. Yeah. Plus the service track. Wow. Service. It's all, it's all down to the Brand service truck. <laughs> Um, 
We can go under the control arms with all this. Already only get like a sixteenth of a pump at a time. <laughs> I'm kind of comfortable actually right here. So take your time. <laughs> you just laying on gravel and you're comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> just a dead body. It looks like a crime scene now. <laughs> If you're ever working on an old Mopar, these wheels are locked up so I can't spin them, but you need to know that the driver's side of the car has left-hand thread studs. So if you try to take it off the old lefty-loosey, you're gonna break the stud. So righty-loosey on the driver's side, yeah. lefty-tighty. Up until 72. Yeah, let's make sure we're going the right direction. Yeah. It feels so wrong. <laughs> but look, comes right off. What are we looking at? Image drums. They look good. Little babies. And looks like they greased it when they drove it because there's grease coming out of it. Uh, out of the fittings. Unions here. Yeah, so we've had some repair work done. But new new ER brake hoses, so hopefully it's not too well, bad. We to... brought brake lines. Though. Yeah, we brought every everything. I can't believe these are coming off this easy. A lot of times when a car's been sitting, they're rusted to the hubs. This is it's hardly even rusty back there. That's pretty amazing. Rust, yeah. It should be aluminum, I think. I've, I've locked up my pliers. <laughs> Twisted. I found the top of it. Yeah. I've done that before myself. Oh, yeah, look at there. Oh, yeah, nice. they'll need to be resurfaced because of the just surface rust that, that gets on it. But it's not bad. It's just from the, you can see where the shoes were sticking to it right here. So, I mean, if you were in a pinch, you could really scuff this if you wanted to, but I say just go ahead and resurface it. A little bit of extra insurance, but they're right though. Look at the, the adjusters are new. All that looks clean. Yeah, look how tight the steering is. Yeah, I can, you should see this side moving when you move that perfectly. That's good. See, that's Dodge. That's just a Dodge. Hey. <laughs> There's another brake drum. See where he was saying like the shoes sit in one spot and rust solid to it. That's why they lock up and they're hard to not only move the car because it won't roll, but also get them off because they're rusted yeah. to the, the shoes. But everything looks really nice in here. And look how nice the grease is. It's still literally brand new blue grease. So that's pretty awesome. Oh yeah, same story. This one looks a little... <laughs> that me too. This one looks a little better. Don't inhale that. Oh, hey, look at there. Once you get that rust loose, it comes right off. Professional. <sighs> this one was rusted to the center bore, like I was saying. So that's what's so stubborn, because that's a really tight fit in there. When rust gets in there, it's, it's really difficult. You could spend three hours on that sometimes. Dylan just educated me on this. On the driver's side of the car, they actually stamp the end of the studs with an L for left hand thread. That's pretty cool. Or for a loser. Or for a loser. <laughs> How's it going in here? <laughs> good? This is the first time I've done this. We're good. So we've got new tires and we want to make sure they're clean. So they're going ahead and wire wheeling everything to make it look a little bit better. This car is going to look awesome when it's all said and done. The most important part of a revival is making sure the brakes work. Yeah. I think the front brakes still have some fluid and the rear have gone dry. Honestly, the front brakes look awesome on this car. We might change them anyway. Just uh, Dylan likes to change stuff to make sure he's happy with it, which is a good thing. For safety, safety. Brakes are important, especially <laughs> if you're going to have a father and daughter in this car driving it. Um, so we'll make sure it all works right and it's all safe before this thing is out on the road. But brakes are normally the hardest part. We're going to be changing this master cylinder for sure and uh, probably rebuilding all four corners of the car. So we were having the issue of this thing not wanting to run or idle in the slightest. So I've bought this carburetor here off Amazon. This thing is a sweet little unit to replace our original one just because of how many issues can come up on stuff like this. I'm going to replace it and just start from scratch because a rebuild kit is probably like 30 or 40 bucks. This old carburetor brand new was like 70. So it's, it's a no brainer at this point. Man, it is beautiful in there. Yeah. Like perfect. Let's get these.
So I just climbed under the car to change the oil. And I gotta say, this oil pan is one of the nicest I've ever seen. It's beautifully painted red. It only has one dent in it. And other than just having some oil on it, it's like perfect. But I am now taking the oil filter off and uh, we'll be changing the oil on this thing to make sure we got good oil in it. But it did make 60 pounds of oil pressure while barely running. So I think we'll be just fine. It doesn't fit past their exhaust. Oh gosh, hey, at least it drained in the van. <laughs> We and we're gonna have to clean this exhaust off because it's covered in oil now. We verified that it runs with the old oil. Now, it's always a good idea to swap the oil. This is the slowest funnel I've ever used in my life. <laughs> it comes back out somehow. Right, we're gonna bottle feed her, put some fuel in there. I hope gas is going in there. Yeah. This is nice. Yeah, he has spoiled us by buying those. So we're, we're gonna let Macy hit the key of the charger this time. So she's gonna fire this thing up and hopefully it's gonna sit here and run a little longer. So whenever you're ready, Dylan. We're ready, go for All it. All right, go ahead and bump it. All right, there you go. Now listen to that, it's idling. Really? It's running on its own. Is it making oil pressure? It's getting there, it just got oil pressure. So down there is the oil pressure gauge. So it's making 60, almost 80 pounds of oil pressure at idle. <laughs> That's crazy. 70 pounds of I think it's right at 75 pounds of oil pressure at night. It's in drive. Or it's no, just it's slipping through the, the should be in park. park yeah, it should be in park. Yeah. It goes neutral. Look how smooth that is. A neutral? Neutral. Just leave it for now, but yeah, look at that. Back wheels spinning. <gasps> So it's ready to go down the road already. It's already acting like it's ready to drive. Oh, it's so cool. Man. Oh, you got, okay. You come on this side. It's in neutral. It's running so So my mother was the oldest of seven girls. And uh, so we never went any, any vacation, we went anywhere without two or three of the sisters with us. And so when, um, so we, um, I would lay in the back glass and sleep and ride back there while we were on vacations and stuff so that they could have the seat. Because I was so short and I couldn't see over the dashboard, when my mother was driving, I'd sit on the armrest on the right hand, on the door. I'd sit on the armrest so that I could see out the, see out the window and also it was much cooler because we didn't have air conditioning. Right. So I got fresh air that way. So we stopped at, we was going over the mountains from Gatlin Road to Cherokee one, more, one day. And we stopped at the, at the top of the mountain and there was a bear there and he got up on, t he tried to get up on top of the car. And the dog was barking and stuff and everything. And the dog, the bear almost got on top of the car and dad backed up so the car, he wouldn't get on the car because he's afraid he's going to scratch his car. He didn't like that at all. What is it? Oh. There's a little spine. <laughs> so we found one of the groundhogs. <laughs> so we've been living in here. It just doesn't look so good anymore. <laughs> when we pulled the car out, Jacob and I both could yeah, smell. Something smelled bad. Something smelled like death. So yeah, there you go. There's some death. <laughs> <laughs> that's That's been there for a while. Yeah, there's not a speck of meat left on that. Oh man. Even the spinal cord is gone. That's wild. Oh man. We're gonna use some Duplicolor wheel paint here to make these wheels look brand new. So Jacob, Show us some technique. I don't know if I have the technique. Take it's me. all about that. When you're painting anything that's metal, I like to do a very light coat first. Give it something to stick to. You, then you let it dry. And then you come back and do a thicker coat. Because otherwise, sometimes you get it to flake. Yeah, we'll let that dry, come back and do a slightly thicker coat. And it'll look perfect. Well, 
don't say that, please, because then they're gonna expect perfection. <laughs> okay, it'll look way better than it does now. <laughs> While they're painting the wheels, we're gonna go ahead and start tackling the brakes. The brakes were rebuilt, I think he said in 1997? So, or 90, somewhere in the 90s. And they still look good, but they said they wanna go ahead and just rebuild them anyway, just to, you know, have a peace of mind. So we've got all brand new hardware, new shoes. We're gonna go ahead and tackle it, tear it apart. And uh, we'll have new brakes here shortly. Well, for us, it's gonna be a few hours. On the video, it might be like, what, a minute? Yeah. So it's gonna be a minute. This gas tank is kind of full from what Dylan thinks. So rather than dropping it while it's full, we're just gonna take a center punch and a hammer and make a hole in it because we're replacing it anyway. So there's a hole. Oh, look at it coming out. Ew. And we're just gonna drain it into a pan. This is where you uh, turn on your smell-o-vision. Just yeah, smell how varnish. nasty that gas is. Wow, look at the trunk floor. You sure you want to sell it? <laughs> <laughs> kidding, I'm kidding people. Jeez. Let me see if I can, ow! I told you, that got me mean. too. Listen, if you're working on an old car and you need restoration parts, look up Classic Industries. They have so much good stuff. And they get all sorts of great parts to get this car back going just as we intended it to. <laughs> I'm, it's still up for debate. There's the tag. I see it. I'm a little terrified now. What as long we... as you feel safe, Dylan. <laughs> I'd never feel safe. 276. So we got uh, an open, a burnout car. An open 276 rear. Big burnouts. <laughs> Big burnouts. And screws, so this brake hose. So you took all right. that apart. No wonder you weren't there so long. Yeah. <laughs> I could have just unscrewed that. You could have just unscrewed that. <laughs> Dang. I didn't have to do all that work. I did all that for no reason. <laughs> I could have just screwed it right back in there and been fine. So, anyway, can we start the car again? Because it makes me feel better. Uh, so you want just to, to come in here, out here, right? Yeah, I mean, you can lean in if you want, or you could hit the key. It's up to you, whatever, whatever you're comfortable with. He'll work the gas, so you don't need to hit the, the throttle. Are you ready? Go for it. <laughs> I feel like used to. Look how quiet it is. I know. It's amazing. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. That's fantastic. That's Thank awesome. you guys. It's not driving yet. We're not no. done yet, but it's, it's halfway there. I know, but it's just ama it's amazing to listen to hear it ready with the answer. There's a rock, there's a pig, there's a smoke, right over there. Oh, they work! That is oh, crazy. that's awesome. Oh yeah. yeah. So One's a little slower than the other. So. They still work though. That's amazing. Yeah, we got, oh, yeah. yeah, the brake. When you yeah. hit the brake, the left blinker comes on. Let me see if it comes on the rear one. Oh, oh we need some gas. Yeah. Oh yeah, we got brake lights. We got brake lights. We have on and off a couple times. Yeah, dude, yeah, yeah, get it on camera. Look at that. Where's your brake lights? Yeah, look at there. Hit the turn signal. See if you can hit the turn signal. Out of gas. Out of gas. So we still gotta fix the fuel system, but it does run. 
As the sun set, we called day one a wrap and settled in for the night. But we're not done yet. We've got a lot of stuff left to do. This charger needs a ton more work to make it usable once again. But we've got one day to tackle all of it. Think we can handle it? Good morning, Jacob. Good morning, sir. <laughs> you gotta do some glamour shots. You know, of course. We are on day two of getting the 68 Charger back on the road for the first time in quite a long time. Today's uh, list of things to do is finish up the brakes, get the gas tank in. Uh, we've got new tires on the way uh, for Coker. They just got them mounted. Uh, what we're gonna achieve in this video, I'm hoping, is that we're gonna have this thing to where it can run and drive. And then at the end of the video, we're gonna go over to Jacob's channel and watch him clean it up and detail it. So uh, we've got a lot of stuff left to do. We gotta get this car back on the ground because it's still in hover mode. And then we'll be having a 68 charger that runs and drives. I can't wait, what do you think? Dude, I think today's gonna be a pretty straightforward, easy day and this car will be running before we know it. I'm wearing two hats still. And then this is where, <laughs> <laughs> dang, he noticed. We were gonna see how long it took him and he, he saw himself. <laughs> got a special delivery, got our brand new Coker tires mounted onto our original wheels. And when you see it with that white line and the black paint, that looks fantastic. Duplicolor really does outstanding work to make these wheels look brand new. Well, they even took the blue off of it for us. That was nice of them. So we're gonna get these on, clean them up, a little bit of tire shine, and this thing will be looking good. We kept two of the best tires, so that way we could actually use those as spares. I mean, they held air, so it will be good, in, you know, if we're ever in a pinch or something like that. So we'll get these put on, and uh, we'll go from there. Hopefully, we can have it on the ground here in just a minute. We got a brand new gas tank. This big old box right here. And that's gonna really help us out in making sure this car lasts for another 50, 60 years. Oh yeah. She's a beauty. And on top of that, Classic Industries was kind enough to send us brand new tank straps, brand new hardware to mount all this stuff in, and a sending unit with the rubber grommet. So we have everything to make this car have a good gas tank. Not only did they supply us with everything we needed for the fuel tank, but Classic Industries gave it this nice little mat to go in between the trunk and the actual gas tank. So we've got everything we need here to make this car run, drive, and stop with proper fueling. So thank you, Classic Industries, for all the parts you gave us. Brake hose is installed. Everything's ready on that end. I checked the rear end fluid. It was completely full. Now I gotta change out this hose here, get the new sitting unit on the tank, and get everything hooked back up, and we'll put the new gas tank in. This trunk floor looks really good compared to a lot of ones I've seen. I mean, you've got some crunchy spots right here, and then I think like just a little bit right up here, but that's really good compared to what I've seen in a lot of cars. So you could really just cut this out and patch it because all this metal right here is fantastic. What you doing, Dylan? Suffering. Let me uh, get this up there for you. Hang oh, on. that also goes on top. Yeah. Wiggle that up there. <clears throat> this is difficult while filming. Yeah. Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah, you look comfortable. <laughs> Sandwiched. <laughs> so Dylan's underneath the back of the car wrapping up the fuel tank install. I figured I'd get started on the brakes now that I got all of the drums back on. So the front is all put together. The rear has the drums on it. The adjusters are adjusted out to where they're just barely touching the shoes. But now we need to change this old master cylinder. And Dylan turned me on to these parrot nose pliers. They're kind of the best things ever for brake lines apparently. So old brake lines are a huge struggle sometimes. These. Literally, look, I, I just broke that loose, all right. So I'm gonna go into the dash. I got both these lines loose and take off the four nuts that are holding this to the firewall. So now I get to do some yoga underneath the dash. All right, so now we're inside the interior of the charger doing some work for the first time. Uh, the master cylinder is held on with four studs that come through the firewall and have nuts on the back. And uh, they're half inch, so we got this little swivelly extension on a ratchet and we're just gonna break those loose. And it's actually pretty nice under the dash of this car. There's not a bunch of crazy wiring or anything. It looks really good. There's one. They're not all rusty because they're inside the car. So there's 
see these two two nut, nuts right here on either side of this? Yeah. There's one there, one there. There's two above it. Uh -huh. The top right one is the one I need to get. So this needs to go on there, and my hands are too big. So I actually get to use somebody with small hands to help out for once. Okay. Push toward me. Yeah, push toward me. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> well, it's about leverage too, so if you get a little further down on the handle. And sometimes those right. universal joints will bind, so you gotta move it a little. Oh, jeez. <laughs> what did I do? I don't know. We'll find out in a second. And, uh, just hold the matches so under steady. Alright. Got it. Yep. That sounded pleasant. I got one more to get. Alright. Okay. You loosen it up. That's ready to come out now. You see that start dripping once you break it. Take it yeah. out. Oh, you forgot the pedal. <laughs> it's a bolt and a nut on the pedal. Mopar. Apparently on Mopars, I'm generally a Chevy guy. Uh, they have a bolt that actually holds the rod to the rear of the master cylinder and then attaches it to the brake pedal instead of just having it in a cup in the back of the master cylinder where you can just pull it out and the rod stays. Apparently it all comes out together. Learn something new today. All right, go ahead. Here we go. So this rod has a little plate, I think, that's retaining it. And this one has a little tab. So we gotta get a flat head screw out that's been in there for 50 plus years. That's, that's always fun. I wish you nothing but luck. There we go, look at that. Brand new gas tank with a stainless steel straps. That looks fabulous right there. New sending unit fuel line is hooked up. We've got a complete fuel system ready to go and power this car. Check it for leaks. Don't get the stupid store-bought gas cans. Go buy a race gas can. Look how much better that is. I haven't spilled a drop. I don't see anything on the ground. That's good news. Well, Mopar tanks can leak, leak really badly if you get that sending unit O-ring wrong. Yeah. Because it's not at the top of the tank. It's no. on the side of the tank. Yeah, that's why this this tank was actually leaking. You can see because this O-ring will get uh, dried out, and it was actually leaking out of the sending unit. So you got to be careful with stuff like that. I've seen a lot of them leap right there in that same spot, so. Yeah, you so, go fill it up at the gas station on your first drive and you dump 10 gallons of gas on the ground. Onto the ground. So there's fuel in the tank, but we're gonna have to prime it basically because the fuel pump is mechanical and it's only gonna pick up fuel when it's running. So we're gonna do like we did earlier, fill up the carburetor float through the vent tube so that way it'll, whoa, it'll run. And then by the time the fuel pump picks up, it should just stay running. That should be enough there. Macy, do you want to do the honors? Yeah, go hit the key again. Just a little, a little more. Hold it longer. All right. Perfect. Nice. Working all good? Don't look Working on its own fuel supply. Look we don't know yet. We don't know yet, but maybe. Yeah. I'm going to turn these mixed screws in a little bit. We don't have a clear filter, so we got no way of knowing. Oh. We're probably going to have to rev it up some. We got fuel. It just... Yeah, it just died. Did you turn it down? Turn it the wrong direction? He's cheating. I'm yeah. cheating. I don't feel like walking around. If you're in a seat, disregard that information. <laughs> Is that how you haul away our car? No, no, not at all. <laughs> Does it seem like it's just dying suddenly? I, that didn't seem like it was running out of gas, though. That was weird. It seems gas-related to me, and that's that's the first. But it's thing. still, it's got fuel. It's squirting fuel. It just well, like just, just start it and rev it up then, and see if it dies while idled up. A little bit. Yeah, it's out of gas. I just pulled this hose loose to make sure we had fuel up to the filter, and it had a ton of pressure in this line. So I think. It was just a stuck float because I filled the float bowl up and it didn't overflow. So I think it just wasn't letting fuel in. That's when you just hit it. And for some reason, magic happens in there <laughs> and it lets gas flow. All right, Dylan's giving up his screwdriver and he's getting in the car to hit the key and work the throttle. Good. 
go out back and listen to that rip. The taillights are on. Are they? Why? When you revved it up. Oh, the brake pedal. Oh, gotcha. I think that float is stuck and not letting gas in. So let's hit it with a bigger hammer. I can take the top back off and check it. Let me just do that. This has gotten much more complicated than we anticipated. When is it not? I bet if we put the old car back on there, it would fire right up. <laughs> yeah, with its 400 vacuum leaks. Hey, we got new gaskets on this one we can borrow. That is true. So I got the top of the carburetor off, and it looked like the floats were too low, basically. So what's happening is that, like Jacob said, it's feeding the accelerator pump, but it can't go through uh, the Venturi, basically. So not, there's not enough fuel for the engine to draw it out of the carburetor. So I'm going to leave the top plate off. We're going to spin the engine over and make sure that the floats are actually doing what they need to. <laughs> on its own fuel supply. We just had the float set too low and a simple adjustment fixed everything. Let me, I'm gonna adjust this just a little bit higher. Yeah, not only will it not idle sometimes, sometimes it'll be really unhappy when you tip into the throttle aggressively if the floats are too low. I'm gonna spill this everywhere. <laughs> All right, fire back up and see if it idles happy. It seemed like it was happier with the float just a little bit higher. I just don't want it to get so high that it touches the top of the base. Yeah. no accelerator pump, but... Oh, that belt's got to be replaced before we go anywhere. It's good now. We're good. Yeah. So, fuel comes in and there's this little stopper called mm -hmm. the needle and seat. It's literally like a rubber point. Mm -hmm. As float comes up, as the fuel comes in, these floats will actually rise to the mm -hmm. point where a lever, you might be able to see it right there, will Mm -hmm. rotate back yeah. and yeah. push that plunger in and just plug this hole That's so cool. as it runs it comes up plugs that hole fuel will basically level itself out because these floats watch what happens when I push it back down see how it starts to come back up yeah it's wanting to add more fuel because that, mm -hmm. that stoppers open now so that's how it basically works and it keeps fuel from not having too much but enough to make it run but that's why it's that's why it wouldn't run because these were too low and fuel couldn't get to the carburetor okay. So, does that make sense how yeah. that kind of works? Well, yeah. I can see it in actual person's type pictures. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. It's 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 strangely simple. <laughs> what happened? It's just shot brake fluid. I like how you missed my pants, but it got so close. I don't know how. <laughs> I have no idea how he got here. <laughs> <laughs> the heater hoses are getting warm, so that's good. It was actually getting cool at the flow. It's not hot yet, but yes, it will get hot very quickly. And then, the most annoying thing you have to do is work on a hot engine. And then you get mad. You do that. You work on a hot engine, yeah. Sometimes you got that to. Awful. It's not fun, but sometimes you got to do it. So apparently, Mopars are weird, and you got to get this rod out of the master cylinder. I was trying to get it out. I took all the guts out of the master cylinder. So that shows you how it works. It's just a little piston in a bore, and there's a front and a rear section. And when you push your brake pedal, it shoots fluid out of here, builds pressure, and you stop. But now I still need to get that out of that. I think one more good hit, this thing's coming out, so. There we go, got it apart. So we needed this rod to use with the new master cylinder, but the rest of this is junk, so we're done with it. I got the old master cylinder off. This is busted old junk. Here's the new hotness. We had to use the old rod from it in the back of it. So there is a little bit of rusty parts on there, but it's gonna be fine. I put some grease on it, it's good to go. So we're gonna get this stuck back in there, get the brake lines hooked to it, and then uh, work on bleeding the brakes. Uh -oh. Yeah, the studs came out on one. Ah! 
<laughs> and we'll fill it up with fluid and we'll start by bleeding this. It's, I mean, you're really supposed to bench bleed it where you just sit there and work it with your hand. But I like to do it in the car because I'm lazy and it's just easier. So. Since all this is done, we've got just a few more things left on the list. We need tail lights, and we have one half of our brake lights. And then Jacob's going to handle all this as far as washing and waxing and vacuuming the car out in his video. And then as you see through this video, we've got a lot of interviews with the original owner and his daughter. So it's going to be very cool and a lot of history on this old car. I went to get my driver's test. I, uh, my dad took off work that day to take me to the, to the, and we had to go to Gallatin because the tester was only in Lebanon once a week and of course my birthday did not fall on the right day so we had to go to Gallatin so we got in the car and went to Gallatin and we actually had to figure out how to use the seat belt so it took us took us a couple hours to figure out how to do all the seat belts because we never used seat belts and uh, I took my driver's test and, and then after the driver's I passed of course um, but um, after that I uh, we, we went to my grandparents house his mom and his dad's house and then we went to my mother's house my mother's parents house so I could show my new driver's license and uh, when I go, and so when I got home, he threw me a set of keys, and he said, "Now you can drive yourself wherever you need to go." He said, "I don't have to get up anymore." And I, so he always told me, he said, "You're going to wear the paint off this car and wash it." Because every Saturday morning, I got out, I had to wash the car. So we noticed that the flasher switch was gone from the inside of the dash, and Jacob told me about this. Follow me. Inside the garage, there was an old toolbox that uh, Jacob had told me about, and this is what Mr. Larry had been using to work on the car. And guess what? There's the switch right there. So that's our, well, I guess it's froze up. But, oh, it works, look at there. There's our hazard switch. So we can put that back in. So you do this number and Dylan gets uncomfortable. <laughs> he needs to be arrested. Straight to jail. Should I just keep going? I'm yeah, just gonna keep going. going until somebody tells me to stop really yeah, loud. Yeah, you're good. I'm gonna close this one up. It almost needs something to put behind her back. Does that seat go for? Yes, it does. Let's see if we can get the seat back for it. It'll make your life a little it's easier. It's fine, I, I point my foot half my life. All right, so we have fluid dripping out of the master cylinder, so that means we should see fluid to start go down the brake lines. So Macy's gonna work the pedal and Jacob's gonna start bleeding at each wheel cylinder. All right, so pump it up. One, two, three, pull, All right. floor. All right, hold it. Hang on. Probably gonna have to do a bunch because it's got a long way to go. All right, lift, let it up and pump it. I have a little vacuum bleeder tool and we were struggling to get fluid started. And if you can't get fluid started with the master cylinder, sometimes you need to help it out a little. And so, little vacuum bleeder, see we've got fluid here in this canister now. So we've actually got fluid flowing from the master to the back now. And uh, it's kind of a big deal. Without fluid, this is hard to bleed brakes. Yeah. So just kind of get it lined up with the, the hub. So you'll see the stud sticking out. Yeah. Get the pattern of the wheel to kind of match it. that. So try to knock the, the lower part down, like toward Dylan. There you go, perfect. Just. Boom. All right. I did it. Now you got to get the lug nut started. Yeah. All right. Is that supposed to sound like that? Go, go more on it, a little bit more, because it's on the lowest setting, so it's. Not better this one. Oh jeez. These things are your friend when you're doing tires. <laughs> I have this on the lowest setting, so it's not tightening it more than like 40 foot pounds. What do you think? I think uh, it looks a whole lot different with new wheels and tires on it. Cobra tire is great. Old wheels with new paint. Right. With brand new tires. They look awesome. It's like stepping back to the 60s. Absolutely. That American classic with the white line. Oof. Yes. Oof. So these are what size are these again? These are a 205-75-14. So this is still on 14 inch wheels. Like it would have been brand new. Left hand thread lug nuts, man. They're weird. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, battery's charged up again. We're gonna put this back in and uh, fire it up. And before we move it, we need to check the transmission fluid level because we don't want to run this thing dry. I'm gonna fire it up, put it in neutral because that engages the pump, let it warm up a little bit, and we'll be able to check the fluid then. Go. 
Oh. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> he got me. He got me good. Four marks. <laughs> So at idle, this thing's not really charging, but watch when he revs it up. Look at this, this voltmeter. I got it backwards now. Look at this voltmeter. Rev it up, Dylan. All right, so what's happening is it's loading up the alternator to charge the battery and it's making it squeal. So we need to either put a new belt on it or tighten that belt and it'll be good. Add a little coolant to it. You've got a new air cleaner ready to cleaned up and painted. Looking good. We're about ready to drive this thing. The joys of finding the carpet bed. <laughs> oh, this is Whoop. so fun. There you go. What do you think? I think wow. <laughs> That's what she said, wow. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It is a good workout. So when's the last time you were in this car in the driver's seat? Um probably like nineteen ninety, something like that. Really? So this yeah. brings back a lot of memories, I'm guessing. Yes, yes. That's awesome. Yeah, this is so weird to do this. So how does it feel to be able to we're about to put it in gear and you're gonna drive it. You're the first person that gets to drive it. I know, I was excited. <laughs> Are you ready? So you go ahead, turn the key. Give her a rev up, that's an ass. <laughs> Alright, match the brake real good. Oh look, it took gear. Go ahead and drive her forward. How was that? That was fantastic. I forgot about how hard you had to push on the gas pedal, though. Yeah, well, you're used to that, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're, used to, you're used to racing this thing. Exactly, yeah. Well, I say we're going to take this thing down the road here a little bit later, uh, but we got to get it. Whoops. Horn works. <laughs> yeah, horn works. <laughs> we got to get it good and cleaned up for you, though, and we're going to go hit the town, and we're going to let Jacob clean it up real fast on his video on his channel. But well, we got your car back and run in order. I know, it's fantastic. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is wonderful. Yes, ma'am. It just felt like I was going back to my teenage years and driving and everything. But uh, it, it's just amazing because Dad, Dad's I always loved that car. And I, and I always, you know, because of him, I, you know, I loved it too. And so, because uh, we were always, he, and I also worked on the car for years with him because everywhere he went, when he's off work, I was always with him. I was his shadow. And so, uh, and so he, uh, he, uh, it's just, it's just so much of my childhood. I mean, they were, you know, all my childhood, that car has always been in the, in the, in everything we've ever done. And so it's this, just watching it get cleaned up and stuff. It just reminds me of the days that I used to wash it every Saturday morning. So 
Well, I'm so, I was so excited when I heard that she's going to come because Dad turned 80 years old this year. Back in February, he turned 80. So this is kind of like a belated birthday present for him. So we really appreciate you guys coming and doing this for us because I know he really does appreciate it. He, he, just, he just loves that car so much. So I really appreciate you guys doing that. I like to do that. I like to start, you know, trying to take a, a, a project every few months and try to do something for the car and do to the car so that we can keep going with it and let Dwayne and he and Marcy, Marcy Macy work on it more. Stay tuned. <laughs> That's right. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Well, that's a wrap. We've got a Charger and we've got a family here that really appreciated a car that deserved it. And honestly, I'm very excited to see the future of this car. And if you wanna see more content on this, of course, Jacob is gonna be cleaning up this car in part two where we actually take it, hit the road and drive it for the first time in all this time. But we're gonna really detail everything, make it look really clean and really nice. And we've got a lot left to do. And then you guys are gonna be putting out, what's your channel name again? May C. May C's Garage, M-A-Y-S-E-I-Z-E, -E, Garage. So they're gonna be taking it and uh, continuing the story on the car and really finishing it up from where we started it. So that's really what we're trying to do is get them uh, at least a really big jump start to using the car and putting it back to the road and being driven like it was supposed to. So hope you guys enjoyed the car. I'm excited, I've had a fantastic weekend here. I mean, this has been uh, really heartwarming to meet a, a, a very fine, fantastic group of folks who, you know, they brought us in and they were super hospitable. I mean, we ate really good this weekend. <laughs> we had some good food and I've had a fantastic time. So don't leave yet. Right now, in the top right of this video, you'll see Jacob's video. It's, it's also linked down in the description below, as well as his channel in the Macy's Garage. You'll be able to see everything, and they're gonna be doing behind the scenes work so you guys can really kind of see all the details and the grunt work and the uh, you know suffering that we went through to make all this happen. <laughs> so we've had a fantastic time. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> all right. <laughs>